And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everybody, it's Ryan Metzler here again, back with some reviews finally, and taking a look at Azitland from Ares Games. Now this is an area control game from for two to four players, really meant for three or four, but it does have a two player variant, uh, in which you're going to be choosing kind of secret roles or secret agendas to try and control different parts of the land in an Aztec environment. Uh, so you're gonna try and control jungles or deserts or mountains or whatever the case may be, and whoever best accomplishes this and best manages their resources or their cards by the end of the game will be the winner. So real quick, why don't we take a look at what you get inside of this box and how the game plays, and then we'll come back here and we'll get my final thoughts on Azitlan. So here you can see the components for Azitlan all set up. This is set up for a four-player game. And what this game essentially is is an area control game played out on this map of different types of terrains. You can see here that we have deserts and forests and mountains and cities and terraced plains. And you're going to be trying to get these different areas in different rounds of the game. And there are five rounds. Each round you'll have a different goal. Now each player is going to start and they're going to have a whole bunch of these little pawns. These are their area control pawns that they're going to be using to place out onto the board in order to try and control the different areas. And each player is also going to have a deck of cards. Now it's not really a deck, it's more of a hand, uh, and these cards are going to have a number on them. For example, this one is the six, we have a four, five, a six, a seven, eight, and a nine. Uh, and each of these cards will also have a terrain associated with it. Uh, actually, the one I showed you was not the six, it was the nine. Uh, but this is for cities, and you'll see it has the picture of a city behind it. And it also has a little pyramid in the top left corner to show that it's the nine and it's the city card. The four is a wild card, it can be any of them, and I'll tell you why that matters in a bit. But the five is the forests, the six is the deserts, the eight is the plains, and the seven is the mountains. So so each player is going to start the game, and you actually don't control these pawns, but you have them in your color. And there's going to be a starting turn order, in this case it's green, red, yellow, blue. And starting at the beginning of the game, each player is going to take one of these cards, and they're going to play it face down secret so that each player doesn't know what the other players have chosen. So maybe this player chooses eight planes, and they place it down and face in front of themselves. And each other player chooses a card as well. <coughs> After this, you're going to start placing pawns out on the board, and depending on how many players you have, you're going to start with a certain number of pawns. It's eight in a three-player game and seven in a four-player game, uh, but essentially you're going to start with that many pawns. This is a four-player game, so we'll say that green player is starting and they get seven pawns for this round. In the next round, they would get six, and then the round after that, five, four, and three in the final round. So you're going to get fewer pawns as the game goes on. But you're going to have these pawns and in turn order, starting with the first player, you're going to place one of your pawns on the board anywhere you like. So you're going to decide, okay, I want to place this out here, and maybe I know that I'm trying to get planes. And so I place this out here on the board, and I now pass the turn to the next player who places one of their pawns. So red would place a pawn, and maybe they are going for mountains. Uh, and you pass to the next player, and the next player is yellow, and maybe they're going for planes as well, so they place that on this plane. And you're going to keep doing this in turn order until it gets back to you. So uh, finally blue would place and we'll say they're going for cities and then we get back to green. At this point, green has choices to make. They can always and they will always place one pawn on the board. So maybe they place over here on this mountain trying to build over to this, plateau, or to this plane. You don't ever have to place adjacent. I could just throw this pawn over here. But being adjacent is good for certain reasons that I'll show you during the scoring portion. So maybe they decide to place here. They could also now move one pawn. So when it's your turn, you can place one and move one. And they can move adjacent if they wanted to, moving off of this plane. Which will become important when you're jockeying for position to try and control different areas later in later rounds or later in the first round. So you'll keep on in this manner with each player placing and moving one pawn at a time until you finish placing all of your pawns. So let's just place some pawns out on the board for an example. Let's place a pawn here, we'll place a pawn here. Blue is going to go over here and yellow over here. Let's just say, even though this isn't nearly enough pawns, this was our end game scenario. And that each of our players had chosen a card. So this player had chosen this card, and this player had chosen this card, and this player had chosen this card. So, starting with the first player, who is green, they would, well, everyone would reveal their cards. And we'd see here that green has chosen four, that our blue player has chosen eight, that the yellow player has chosen five, and our red player has chosen nine. So now we're going to start with the green player and we're going to look at all of the areas that they're in to see what they control. And you'd see the green player here is in this area with red. Well, red has chosen a nine and green has chosen a four. So nine is bigger than four and you'd multiply the number you chose by the number of people you have there. So nine times one is nine, four times one is four. At this point, red has a choice. They can either kill off green 
or they can let green stay and they can draw a special card here. These are cards that are basically favors of the gods that are going to give you some type of bonus in the game. So you'll see here, some of them say, for example, uh, this one is if you tie in power with somebody, you can choose to win. So it's a tiebreaker. Or this one will let you, during a scoring round, score extra points for every jungle you have. Some of them are cards that you can collect, and the more of them you get at the end of the game, the more points you will have. Or some of them will simply say that if somebody decides that they are going to kick you off of an area, you can instead say, no, I'm staying, but they get to draw one of these cards. So there are all types of cards that can benefit you throughout the game. Anyhow, Red gets to make that choice when it comes around to Red's turn. Uh, and Red would probably say, well, Green is going for Wild, I don't really know what they're going to choose. Uh, I think it's to my benefit that I'm going to draw a card and keep it in my hand, and I got one of the scoring cards. And they would do this comparison for all areas that are shared, and so you can only uh, choose to either kick somebody off or let them stay. Uh, and if there's multiple people to kick off, you either have to kick off all of them or let all of them stay. And until all of the areas have been decided, so you're going to go through and assess each area individually. After you've done this, you're going to score points based on domains that you control, and domains are connected areas adjacently. So for example, if green was still in all of these areas, they would have one domain of three area. This terraced plain here, the mountain here, and the terraced plain that's connected to that. When you do this, you're going to score points, bonus points, <coughs> as follows. You're going to get one point for each of the land areas that you have. So this is a one, two, three area. It's worth three points. However, since they chose wild, they can choose any of the bonus or any of the areas to be their bonus type. So let's see, they have two terraced planes. They're going to choose terraced planes. And they're going to score bonus points accordingly for this. So since this area has two terraced planes, they're going to multiply that by itself. Two times two is four bonus points. So they get one, two, three, plus four is seven points. If they had a guy over here in this area, this is a domain of one size. And since they chose terrace planes as their bonus, it would be worth one, two points. Any domain that you have, so for example, this one size domain that doesn't contain any of your bonus types, so he chose terrace planes, does not score any points. So this point is worth nothing, but if you had a guy here, this domain would be worth one, two, three points because it is of two size and has one of the bonus types. In this manner, you're going to keep going. You're going to start another round after you've cleared off everything and scored all of the points for each of the players who have their domains. And you're going to play another round, choosing a different card this time because you've already used one from your hand and playing out in the same way. So you're going to see the game shifts where you're trying to control different types of terrains in different rounds. At the end of the game, you'll have played five of your six cards and you'll have one card left over. The card you have left over will have a victory point value in the bottom right hand corner, which is all of the cards except for the wild card. Uh, and those are the number of bonus points you get at the end of the game for not using that card. You'll see the city one is worth 20, some of them are worth 9, 5, 2. Uh, they all have a different victory point value, but you add that to your total score at the end of the game, and whoever has the most points through best controlling the appropriate territories, through collecting cards and scoring bonus points, and through keeping the highest valued card to the end of the game will be the winner. Well, there you have it. That is Azitlan, a very basic area control game for two to four players. One that I think has some very good merits. One, it's a beautiful game. I love the production value and the pieces are wonderful. Two, I think it's going to be a very good introduction to area control for players who maybe aren't familiar with the game style. Uh, there's, you know, not a whole lot to learn. It's very easy to teach. Each round is simply choosing a card and placing out a piece and then maybe moving a piece to try and gain control of an area to increase your domains and get more of the, your chosen secret area into that domain in order to score more points based on the multiplier. Uh, now, the challenge is coming in with all the other players trying to interfere with what you're doing, those players trying to deduce what secret area you chose and prevent you from getting a domain that contains too many of that secret area and thus you know, forcing you to score fewer points. Uh, so there is some challenge there, and depending on the group, I think it's going to be more of a cutthroat game if you have other players who are able to figure out what you're trying to do. Uh, so with that said, I think it's a pretty decent, light area control game. It's not one that I personally, personally am going to be keeping in my collection because it's a little bit lighter fare than what I tend to like to play, but I think for introducing people to the genre, uh, especially, you know, trying to pull people towards the game who think it's either a beautiful looking game or think that the mechanics are going to be easy to learn, that as Land will serve as a very good uh, segue into this whole genre of game. So if that sounds good to you, check out Azitlan from Ares Games. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff.
in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.